Okay, another alternator modification here. What I did is my voltage regulator in here was starting to go on me. Um, I noticed my voltage on the, the meter here was kind of flickering, like 15 and a half. It was even going to the red 16. And I've had this for like two years already. I use the machine a lot. And the regulator that goes in there for the 10 SI and the 12 SI, it's a little small. It's a small regulator like this with two blades. And I'll show you the images in a minute, what it looks like how I modified it but even though it was in here it was easy to change I figured I'd rather have an external one I found this circuit online it's really good let me see if I get a good shot of it right there All right. that's a TIP121 transistor there's another 2N3904 in there a couple of capacitors for smoothing out ripples and there's one two three four resistors I didn't have a 900 ohm, which I needed, so I used a 1000 and a 12, and that gave me 920 something. There's a diode, a 4006, and there's a Zener in there. I think that's around 12.7 or 13. And you definitely need this heat sink. It puts out a good amount of heat. With this, it's fine. If you don't put that, forget about it. But now, the beauty of this new regulator is, if anything goes wrong, I have all the parts to fix it right here. I don't have to worry about running out and buying a new one, which could be $25 or more. And they have to take the whole thing apart. Here I just desoldered the component, which will likely be just this transistor or, or, or a bad Zener, and just solder them back in and I'm done. So it's much easier to fix. There's less parts on the inside to deal with now. All I have is the brushes with the diode trio and the rectifier right here that comes out to the battery positive. And my output voltage is around 14.8, that's the max. And I ran it at, I ran like 8 amps straight and it kept up the voltage just fine. So I'm very happy with it. So if you're looking for an external voltage regulator, I got this from chemelec.com, it's C-H-E-M-E-L-E-C.com. He's a real nice guy, he's a Canadian. I actually spoke to him on the phone about the circuit so go visit his website I'll put a link and you can make yourself an external voltage regulator now if you want you could take out this Zener here which I have set to 13 volts and you could put in like a, a 30 volt or a 36 volt and then you could charge a 24 volt battery bank by putting in like a 36 volt Zener here whatever you whatever Zener you choose the output voltage is roughly 2 volts higher see I have a 12.7 and that causes the maximum voltage to come out around 14.75 or 14.8, which is perfect. So there's a lot of uses for this. Basically what I did, you need one wire from the plus. You need these two wires. I gutted the regulator that was in there, and I just used it as a feed-through point, and I kept it in place. This way the brush holder and everything stays where it was. I gutted it out, and each one of these is a line coming from the rotor. This is one brush and that's another brush. This wire coming out of the bottom here, where I'm pointing to, that goes to the end of the diode trio, which is connected to nothing anymore in here. The diode trio wire comes out right there. So you got a plus coming off the battery, you have a diode trio wire coming out, you got two brushes, one for each on the rotor, and then you have a neutral. And it all goes to the circuit. Okay, I want to get rid of this voltage regulator, and I'm going to mount my own voltage regulator on the outside of the alternator. And what I did is I just cut all the circuitry away from the post. Uh, this one here is the diode trio where it connects. This one here goes to the field on the rotor, and this one here is the ground. So what I did is I took this wire and I bypassed it so I could have this connection right here that's going to be the field. My circuit's going to connect there. That's the field. And this one here is still the plus for the diode trio. And this post here was ground. I can connect the ground wire anywhere on the outside of the alternator. So that's how you do it. Bypass straight across. Alright, this is how I mounted it. Wire's coming out. Alright. There's the board. Transistor. A little bit of the thermal compound. Now the heat is pretty solid. 
this will not move. I need it away because this has a positive 12 volt uh, charge on it and you can't let it touch this quarter inch plate steel here because this is the negative. So if you let these two touch you're going to short right out. I luckily had this piece of quarter inch bake light laying around and what I did is on the underside I drilled a hole and I countersunk the head so it, so it's inside the bake light. What I did is I countersunk the head of the screw within the bake light this way when this wing nut's tight the head of the screw can't transfer the 12 volts from the heat sink to the angle plate through the screw to this plate. So now this is isolated from the deck. And that's it. Tried it out, ran it. Total perfection, works great. That's it. Any problem arises, very easy. Take off two screws, lift it up. I could desolder the transistor, put a new one in, and I'm done.